The philosophers and saints of India have always spoken of a great treasure that lies in the hearts of all human beings. If we only take time to look for it, they say, we will find great happiness. Their inspiration, the Vedas. Preserved in the language of Sanskrit, the Vedas contain all departments of human knowledge, including the most important, the wisdom of the soul. This spiritual focus in India culminated in the 15th century in a revolution, a mass movement of people devoted to Krishna. They traveled the country celebrating their spirituality in singing the great mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. A lineage of preceptors preserved the teachings and traditions until more modern times. Bhaktivedanta Swami, a saffron-robed sannyasi monk, had been requested by his guru to spread the teachings to English speakers and now felt he was ready for the task. In 1965, at the age of 69, he set sail on a cargo ship headed for the West. The Western world was ready to hear him. The rebellious youth of the 1960s, including some popular musicians, were especially keen to learn about the wisdom of the East. One of the most famous musicians in the world at the time, George Harrison of the Beatles, took a particular liking to the guru of the Hare Krishna movement, now known by his followers as Srila Prabhupada, and met with him many times. Hare Krishna soon became a household word throughout the country and all over the world, growing so large that a new headquarters was required. In 1973, George Harrison purchased Pigott's Manor and it was dedicated to Krishna and renamed Bhaktivedanta Manor. The manor today is a popular spiritual hub, a center for education and culture, and a living connection to the wisdom traditions of India. Education is one of the cornerstones of what we do here at Bhaktivedanta Manor. We run a variety of courses for people from all walks of life. So a beginner can come in on a Sunday morning for a few hours and learn about karma, yoga, meditation, all the way up to more advanced study which can last for a year or even more. I was looking for something that offered me an opportunity to have a deeper understanding of the Bhagavad Gita. It's certainly given me a new pair of eyes with which I feel, I feel very blessed and very grateful. Gita Life is a great course. It's uh, learning about karma and just really investigating life and, in general. We did some yoga and um, breathing and relaxation and it's been very, very refreshing and healing. The students get involved in a wide range of activities. They see the lovely grounds that we've got, we give them a cart ride, they get to see the cows and the oxen. It's a nice experience for them and we also try to make it fun for them as well. It makes such a difference actually bringing them out to a religious community and they, they always go home and they chat away on the coach about it and they just rave about it. I personally hadn't come here in a particular religion but I've actually come out of it a lot more open mind to how religion can be amazing and how it can really open your eyes. The great thing about Bhaktivedanta Mana is people can take as much or as little as they like we do have programs where people can actually come and reside at the temple. People spend anything from a month to a year, sometimes even a lifetime, to immerse yourself in the wisdom, to really build character. Our founder, Prabhupada, he wanted us to show how the cows are important to society by producing milk and by using the bulls for draft and for transportation. Also, we find that people have a, almost a therapeutic experience when they're with the cows and they can feed them some grass which makes the cows happy and makes them happy feeding the cows. In fact today we were had a few volunteers helping us milk the cows and also drive the oxen. There are loads of fellow volunteers here so there's loads of fun to be had and it's just a brilliant feeling you just feel really peaceful here and there is such a lot of work to do and you do feel that yeah you're doing a good thing for the land for the cows for the people a lot of things are very interesting here uh, we can learn uh, how to grow up the food that we eat we had the chance to milk the cows which was really interesting <laughs> and also funny i've never done it before yeah wonderful experience what I've particularly liked is the possibility to, to be able to, um, to go to classes and, and learn about the Bhagavad Gita 
um, and the Vedic way of life. And um, it's something that I, it's really interests me and I'm going to look more into. We cook for 450 people who visit every day and 2,000 and 3,000 people on Sundays. This holy food is good for our physical health, mental well-being and spiritual well-being. I love coming to the temple most mornings before I go to work and one of my favourite services is to serve all the people that come lovely vegetarian food. This is very pleasing to the people that come, it's also very pleasing for me and ultimately it's most pleasing to Lord Krishna. I've been volunteering here for the last four years. The George Harrison Memorial Garden, which we're sitting in now, um, has a very special place for me. Uh, anyone who visits the temple as uh, a first time visitor, they will always be inspired by uh, the sheer beauty and uh, peace that you experience in this garden. The Woodland Walk it's a wonderful, peaceful walk around the lake. It's so nice and tranquil, and anybody can come and visit. It's, it's really lovely. And also, there are passages from the Bhagavad Gita. One of my favorites is, if you offer me with love and devotion, a leaf, a flower, some water, I will accept it from Lord Krishna. Yeah, we absolutely love it here. It's, um it's just a really nice place, both for mums and babies. We're just all enjoying it together. There's, there's a park here, there's a bakery over there, and we manage to eat together, sit together, have picnics, and the kids can expend their energy here, and they have a really nice time, and we really love coming here, don't we? Do you like it? Do you love it? <laughs> so at Bhakti Vedanta Manor, we have many, many festivals. We start with the Festival of Colours in March and we end with the Festival of Lights, which is known as Diwali, at the end of October and November. Now all these festivals require a lot of manpower. We have a base of 1,300 volunteers that make these festivals. I have surgeons that become car park attendants. I have accountants that make handmade samosas, about 17,000 handmade samosas. Let me tell you about Jamashmi, this is our biggest event. Over a weekend we'll have about 60 to 80,000 people come. And this site that you see just behind me around here turns into a mini city. We're so lucky to have our own theatre. We have many, many actors, we have many volunteers, so many youth, you know. We put on different plays to entertain people about the deeper meanings of life. Who doesn't want to be entertained? Our spiritual master wanted us to distribute this knowledge as far and wide as possible. And the knowledge also comes in the form of our vegetarian food, which we call prashad, which means the Lord's mercy. So we cook a thousand meals a day and distribute it in central London, back to the community. Homeless people, poor students, people who are in need, and people maybe not in need, because the Lord's mercy is for everybody. We have midday meal program in India, and about 1.2 million children are fed every day. Um, hot meals, uh, underprivileged children, and then we have our own um, sister charity, which is the Lotus Trust, and we raise funds for people in uh, natural disasters, need like Philippines or Haiti, uh, and there's a lot more projects that we do just for welfare of, of needy people. The Manor is a fantastic platform for youth to connect um, on a whole new level that they might not experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, there's a youth group called Panavasana. Um, so they do kind of weekly talks, they do retreats, trips abroad. Um, we also have societies and universities. It's something that really brings youth together um, for a joint purpose and something new, something different. I went to my freshers' fair at my university and I saw the word unity uh, written above the poster that they had there. I thought, well, yeah, this resonates with me. So I thought I'd, I'd go and have a look and see what it was about. So I went and um, you know, I really enjoyed it, I kept going back. It was great that I could get involved with this sort of thing and be around people who are like-minded and do things which are not the norm, going against the grain and doing things that are fun and dynamic. At the heart of everything here is devotion, devotion to Krishna. As people we have this necessity for love and to be loved and for delight and for pleasure. The heart needs to be reconciled and it needs to be reposed in things which can reciprocate with it. And the heart empowers everyone in life. The devotion is the driving force. 
And so when it comes together here at the heart of this temple, everybody is rejuvenated, everything is reconciled, and complete wholeness of being is achieved. Chilla Povard, who's our spiritual teacher, had his personal quarters here at Bhaktivedanta Manor. And the rooms are maintained exactly how they were when he was here with us. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to meet Sheila Popard, um, but when I do come into these rooms, I can really feel his presence. Life can be very hectic, and therefore balancing spiritual life can be quite a challenge, but I've found that for me, the one thing that stands out is making sure that I spend time with people who have deep spiritual roots, and understanding from them the wisdom and knowledge of places like the manor gives me a good grounding for my work life in the city. I first came as, as the mayor and in fact my family thought I was going to convert but of course you don't have to convert you can just be part of all this big family and, and I found it wonderful. I had the great fortune of being married here um, my friends family came for the first time and they absolutely were blown away about how warm welcoming and wonderful the community was and also that special energy that comes when you're around people who are also spiritual and want to know about the higher values of life. I'm a yoga teacher by profession and so sometimes I can teach classes here which is really nice because I get to associate with spiritually minded people and that helps me in my own spiritual life as well. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I work um, so juggling all those things uh, can be tough but having a place like the manor, having a sanctuary, somewhere where I can come, not just for myself, but also for my family, is really, really important. And you know, I always feel like we're constantly having a festival and it's really, really fun. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for watching this video. And if you haven't been here before, please do come and visit us. And if there's anything we can do for you, please do contact us. Everyone in this world is looking for happiness and peace. But you know what? There can only be world peace, which we're all looking for, when there is inner peace. Bhaktivedanta Manor offers everyone an opportunity to find that inner peace and happiness. Come and see us soon. Hare Krishna.